Hello everybody. Today we are going to discuss the, the ADC practical, one of the ADC practical exam tasks, which is um, the crown preparation task. Actually two, two tasks in the exam, one of them um, is the full gold crown and the other one is uh, porcelain fused metal. Both are separate tasks and we'll start now sharing um, my screen. And later on, I'm, I'm going also to discuss other um, other tasks for the exam. We'll try to do this session uh, once in a month, and uh, we'll let you know soon uh, what would be the next um, ne next next uh, step for um, for for next session. I mean, um, we'll we'll see what what we are going to discuss. Uh, next time. So I'm going to to start with uh, the full gold crown. Full gold crown is one of the tasks that, um, it's one of the tasks for the Australian dental practical exam. Um, it can come on par on, on day one or day two. Um, both tasks can come on one day. It happened actually uh, before. It would be a bit stressful in the timing because usually the the, the crown preparation uh, task in the exam is one of the tasks that uh, that takes um, a lot of time. So usually you should give it on the exam one and a half hour. So from one and a half to two hours maximum. And you should do it on, on your practice before the exam. You should try to do it in one hour to one hour and a half because in the exam it might take more time than, than what you are doing during your practice. Um, we'll start first with the burrs to be used for this task. And actually the burrs, um, it's, it's personal preference. Um, each clinician um, use uh, burrs and get used to some burrs where actually they uh, prefer to use it for um, each specific task. So it's not necessarily to stick to, to these bears, um, but it is, it is actually my personal preference. So I usually use the tapered diamond burr with round or flat end with the tip diameter, which I feel that the tip diameter is the most important part for, uh, for, for choosing the burr. So when you choose the burr with point diameter of 0.5 millimeter, you will be able to do um, a margin of 0.5 millimeter. Um, you can still, with, with tip diameter of 1 millimeter, you can still do 0.5, but it will be a bit tricky to do that. So, <coughs> sorry. so it's better to get a tip diameter as small as possible. <coughs> sorry. Um, the other, <coughs> excuse me, the other bear which I use is the football diamond bear for occlusal reduction. Um, I usually use the blue band. Um, this, this bear is optional. I, 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 I usually use just one bear for full gold crown, which is the tapered diamond bear. Uh, but it is, it is up to you if you like to use, um, uh, that. The, 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 the football diamond burr, it will aid uh, on the occlusal reduction. Um, third one is the tapered composite finishing diamond burr. I will attach some pictures of these burrs uh, later on during the presentation. So don't worry if you don't like get to what, what's actually this one is. So we use either red or yellow band for finishing. It's important to give a smooth walls of your prep. Um, soft leg discs for finishing is actually um, an optional thing. I, you can use soft leg discs for full gold crown prep, but make sure that you, um, you are not extending it very deep um, to avoid endangering the, the gums. 
and instruments can be used on this task as well which are the hatchet or the GMT uh, gingival marginal trimmer to remove uh, enamel lips at the margins but also this um, this is optional thing also it depends on the accessibility of the tooth so usually I use the hatchet or the gingival marginal trimmer if there is enamel lips for full gold crown on the labial or lingual because usually full gold crown are coming on the exam on the back molar teeth so either uh, the lower six lower seven these were the two teeth that came before in the exam might come later on on upper six or upper seven but you usually you won't be ac the, the the proximal surface won't be accessible for uh, putting these instruments because they are a um, bit thick so you might be able to use it only on the buckle or on the lingual uh, margins okay next slide is showing some pictures of the burrs so um, this this one on the left is the one that I usually use um, I use only this burr if you see also my video on the YouTube um, all, all my preparation except the finishing part all the cutting uh, I did with actually with this with this burr so um, I use usually this burr to um, to do buccal lingual even the occlusal reduction as well along with the proximal you can um, you can use only this one or you can use it adjunctive with the fine tapered uh, uh, diamond burr uh, for the proximal to open the contact first it is also a personal preference the one on the, on the right is the football diamond burr you can see there is one on the left side of the picture is the blue band which is for the cutting and the white band is for finishing usually finishing is three colors for finishing the white is the least aggressive then the yellow then the red these three colors are for finishing for cutting there are also three three colors the most aggressive for cutting is the black band and then the green band and then the blue band I usually prefer to use the blue band for uh, for the ADC tasks because uh, the teeth actually are a bit softer than the natural teeth and it won't cut much more of the tooth structure um, we'll go quickly with uh, the ADC criteria about this task this picture uh, is the, the following picture is taken from the, the ADC practical handbook and um, most of you already know it uh, it's important to read and try to memorize um, all the the things in in the criteria uh, especially I try to memorize much the, the the two parts on the satisfactory and the borderline because um, I try to actually aim toward the ideal or satisfactory and um, and for the borderline I try to avoid getting things for my preparation into the borderline uh, main important things here I'm not going to read all of it because you, you already know uh, most of the criteria for this task but I just will um, go into highlighting some points some important points and later on through the presentation I will summarize what are the important things to look after uh, in the criteria for for this task uh, there are actually three categories um, there is path of insertion and taper preservation of tooth vitality and the finishing margins so for the first thing is the path of insertion and taper it's all about the taperness of the preparation they said ideal is 12 satisfactory is from 6 to 20 and borderline from 20 to 30 or less than 6 unsatisfactory they said more than 
30 degrees. More than 30 degrees will be uh, very tapered. Uh, less than 6 will be nearly parallel. So we are trying to be in between. We are trying to aim toward the 20 degrees. Usually we can, there is no measurement for, for this uh, by an, an instrument or something that we can use on the exam. It's only a visual assessment. So uh, also we'll show you um, a slide later on um, about, about that and how roughly we can assess our preparation regarding the taperness. Second thing is preservation uh, uh, of tooth vitality. Usually this is some, some measurements. They put some measurements there uh, for the amount of reduction needed in different sides of, of the teeth, uh, of the tooth. And they, they said that the axial reduction should be from 0.5 to 1 millimeter, um, closely 1.5. Uh, this is on the ideal for, for this factory. It is axially up to 2 millimeters, occlusally up to 2.5 millimeter. And, and make sure that you understand when you look at these numbers that the, the, the actually the amount of reduction is a bit different than the thickness of the margin. So thickness of the margin will come into the, onto the third last category down on, on, on these criteria, but the, 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 the amount of reduction is a bit higher than the, 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 the width of the margin because usually uh, usually the amount of reduction is also part of it is the, the, the height of contour of the tooth. So for example, if, if I have, uh, like especially on that tooth, if I have like 0.5 millimeter, if I get 0.5 millimeter margin, usually I will have amount of reduction of one, one millimeter or a bit less than one millimeter, but it shouldn't be the same like 0.5 millimeter because there is height of contour on the tooth that usually compensate for the excess of the, the axial reduction. And usually the, the axial reduction we, we usually uh, uh, assess it by, by the putty with the perioprobe, but the, um, the margin we usually do it uh, just by the probe, uh, by the perioprobe without the putty. Okay. Um, also, they mentioned uh, that you shouldn't, you shouldn't um, like do any damage on the adjacent tooth. Um, also, there is shouldn't be any sharp angles on uh, on your preparation. Also, you shouldn't lose any of the anatomy of of the tooth. So, ideally, if you can preserve the anatomy of the tooth that will be um, a good result um, two things actually is very important in most of most of the tasks in in the practical exam which are the anatomy and the finish of your preparation so you should have a good anatomy resembling the same the original tooth structure and also the finish of the preparation it should be very well finished not necessarily to be highly polished, but it should be well finished without any debris, without any sharp um, angles or roughness on, on the surfaces of the preparation or on the margins. Okay, um, we'll move to the next slide. The margin, the, the last, last, last category is the finish on margin. They said that the, the margin should be 0.5 millimeter all around this is the ideal in in satisfactory from 0.5 to 1 millimeter all around and it should be supragingivally by 0.5 to 1 millimeter all around however if you got equigingival margin it is still in the it's still in the satisfactory criteria because they put in the satisfactory the margin is generally supragingival from 0 to 1 so zero means equigingival. Up till one, it's it's still uh, acceptable. Um, just we'll go through some pictures um, 
for uh, the full gold crown. So um, it, it is important to study the, the tooth occlusal anatomy. As you can see on this picture, this is the picture of lower six and seven and eight. Six is a bit different than the seven uh, because uh, it has a three buccal cusps and two lingual ones. For the seven, they have like four and they have a central groove which usually um, usually uh, like a cross shape splitting the tooth into four nearly equal cusps this is on the seven but on the six you have three buccal cusps they are not equal at all to each other the mesiobuccal one is the biggest then the middle then the distal is the smallest and usually it is an issue when you do the uh, the, the preparation for the six usually the distal cusp is the smallest one and it might actually disappear when when you do the occlusive reduction try to keep it as much as possible however i don't think even if you if it totally disappear it would be uh, something that you they will mark you down for that um, so try to preserve the occlusive anatomy as much as you can uh, when I was a beginner in uh, doing crown prep, I was drawing lines in the grooves uh, before I do the depth grooves. So usually I use depth grooves when I, I do my preparation. So drawing a line with the pencil in the exam still it is um, actually acceptable. And you can use it to mark the, the grooves and then you can do it do the depth grooves with the burr it's important also to uh, when you align the burr it is important to put it on the right direction of each groove and and then after doing the depth grooves you will be able to uh, connect these grooves together don't forget to put the groove in the central groove as well because if you don't put on the central groove, it will be under pre prepared. Um, next slide will be showing um, the occlusal preparation, the 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 occlusal after placing the depth groups. You should follow the ups and downs of of the of the cusps so when you connect the lines together you shouldn't move your bear flat it should go up and down it should go up and down with with the slope of each cusp to avoid getting a flat occlusal surface because if if you get it flat it would it won't be considered that you are following the original anatomy of the tooth So next slide showing some uh, the, the picture of the occlusal reduction. I usually, I usually, I, I'm sorry, I forgot to say that. I usually start with the occlusal reduction during my prep because it will give me, it will give me a chance to do like less reduction onto the other surfaces when you do the occlusal reduction. It is very important in this task, in this task and the other the, the other crown prep task, which is porcelain fused to metal, to take a putty uh, index, take a putty impression before you um, uh, before before you start putting anything, before you start putting the burr into the tooth, you should uh, you should actually take a putty. I I advise, especially in the exam, to to, to take two putties in uh, for each tooth just because usually I use for four gold crown I use two kind of putties I cut them differently so I will come to that point also to this point also later um, but yeah before before doing this task the putty is important to assess the amount of reduction and to make sure that um, the amount of reduction is 
is really appropriate. So this is a picture of the furnished occlusal reduction. You can see it is not flat. It is going up and down uh, the same as the original anatomy. Might still need more reduction, but I tend to do um, like a bit of uh, less reduction than the required from the beginning. And uh, this is giving me a chance if I need to do any corrections, if I need to uh, like adjust anything in the future, so I can um, do that later on. I will still have uh, a space or amount of reduction that I can play with uh, later on. Okay, I will, I will come actually into the questions um, just soon after we finish the full gold crown. Um, this picture is showing some uh, the fender wedge and fender prep. The fender wedge is that orange one and the prep is the silver one. Uh, fender prep is only coming on one color, one size. Uh, it is that silver one. And it is actually, um, it has advantage and disadvantage. Usually this one, the fender, fender prep is originally made for crown preparation. Um, I, I usually use it for the proximal reduction just to avoid, um, to avoid injuring of the adjacent teeth. Um, it has this advantage of blocking at all the surface. So you won't be able to see, uh, I usually, if I find when I, when I put it on the mesial side, I can see actually the mesial surface of the tooth that I'm going to cut it. So I find that um, I prefer to put like a fender wedge, which have a smaller band on the mesial side and put a fender prep on the distal. Uh, both actually have a disadvantage that they, they actually push the gums a little bit down so I advise I usually advise candidates when they use fender prep or fender wedge not to go very deep into the proximal because it may end with getting like equigingival or subgingival margins if you go very deep while the the fender uh, the, the fender wedge and prep are in 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 between the teeth so I, 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 um, I usually prefer to use this uh, alternative methods to use like bands on the adjacent teeth because it's, it's very important in the exam to uh, avoid, avoid getting the, the, the neighboring teeth uh, injured during your preparation. So I usually do the, the initial reduction for the proximal opening the, the, the contact and the initial proximal reduction while they are in between the teeth and then I take them out and continue without, without them. So this is um, the next slide showing the, um, the initial proximal reduction. And then I usually, after I finish the proximal reduction, I move into the buckle. Um, as, as what I did actually on, uh, um, on, on the videos, I, I usually like mark, put a line first, or you can do it with a, with a pencil if it's allowed to use a pencil, or um, you can use it with a burr, I, I, I actually, um, mark the tooth with the burr first and then I put my depth grooves usually on the buccal surface don't forget to um, to use uh, to do it on two planes you can do on the like the gingival the the cervical third and then the other plane should be including the middle and um, the occlusal thirds so I do two planes, depth grooves, two reduction planes, and then the last picture is showing this is after 
I do the, the buffer reduction. Next slide showing the lingual surface preparation. Usually lingual surface it is just on one plane. This is a bit different if it comes on the upper. So don't forget on the upper molar teeth six or seven, it is a bit different. So the, 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 the secondary plane should be placed on the, um, um, on the palatal surface um, or the palatal occlusal surface of the upper six and seven. So the secondary cusp, which actually comes into a, a little bit more reduction um, than the usual. So it should be on, on the palatal surface for upper six and seven. For the lower, the secondary plane should be on the buccal surface, buccal occlusal surface. So for lingual surface preparation, it is usually just one plane. I do depth of grooves and then I connect them together, try to keep uh, the, the wall not divergent, not convergent, a bit straight. More convergent is, is a bit convergent is better than uh, divergent for sure because if you get divergent wall, this means that most probably you will have an undercut on, on, the, on the preparation, on the wall. Next slide will show the full aspect of the tooth after finishing the preparation. Um, yeah, this is the lower seven after finishing the preparation. Uh, important that you should say like the full width of the margin. So, uh, I mean, it should be, the margin should be continuous, uh, ideally of uniform thickness. If possible, that would be an ideal thing. Uh, if not, just try to keep it within the one millimeter, the, 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 the required one millimeter uh, dimension of the margin. Sometimes I also polish the, the occlusal surface, only the occlusal surface. Um, I use like rubber cups with, with or without uh, polishing paste. Um, it's also personal preference. If you don't polish it, it won't be an issue. It will still be good. But I find when I polish the occlusal surface, it looks better and it makes sure that it doesn't have any sharp, um, sharp angles uh, on 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 the actually on the transition between the occlusal and the other surfaces. Sorry, next, uh, next, next slide is showing the um, the preparation under just um, sunlight to just show you how how when 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 you look at the tooth from top view, you should be able to see the margins clearly like that. I usually, when I assess it, I don't assess it by direct view because you won't be able to do that on, on the mannequin mouth, especially for the lower or upper molars. So I usually use the, the mirror uh, by indirect vision, trying to check the, the full thickness of the, the margin. All around, it should be uh, actually continuous. It, it doesn't matter if you have a bit of thicker margin on one side more than the other. You can see on this picture that the distal is a bit wide than the other margin, but it is still within the one millimeter. It is, it is better to get it like all around like 0.8 millimeter. If possible to do that, it will be, it will look actually better. But if, if you find that usually the distal becomes uh, bigger because it's the most far inaccessible side of the tooth but it's still okay to get it um, um, as, as long as it is uh, less than one millimeter but most importantly it should be continuous 
Okay, we'll go into some clinical tips and tricks. I shared uh, most of them before, but for for the candidates who um, didn't see it before, you may need to know that. It is important, as I said in the beginning of uh, of this session, that the tip diameter of the burr when when you use uh, when when you select which burr you are going to use, it is important to select a burr diameter which is actually similar to the diameter of the margin that you are going to do. So I usually use the the caliber to check the my, my the width of my burr. So you can use the the caliber to check the tip diameter. I, I usually try to uh, find a bear with 0.5 um, tape diameter. It doesn't matter whether it is a flat or round end because I got a, I, I got a lot of this question actually from candidates. You're asking whether whether you do the, the margins chamfer or shoulder. It actually doesn't matter. What, what I did for the, my preparation was actually Many can consider it many shoulder, so um, it's a because I use the flat one, but it doesn't matter whether you get a shoulder or chamfer. They are not after the geometry of the finish line, but they are actually assessing the width of the finish line, the the, the width of the margin, not the geometry of the margin. I find actually for me it's easier even when I do the finish. The finishing of my preparation and everything I find the flat is much easier than getting the rounded margins um, next um, trick or tip is I usually do two putties um, I take two putty index for the, the preparation before I start and it's very important for uh, the full gold crown to cut actually one of them to cut it means you distal so you will be able to see the whole occlusal reduction to assess it to see whether you need more reduction in any part of it because usually it is actually uh, it is hard to do that when you do only the buccolingual cut so I prefer both cuts the buccolingual and the mesial distal. So for the buccolingual, you can assess the buccal and lingual surface, along with also part of the occlusal, but not the whole occlusal surface. For the for the mesial distal, it is very beneficial for the occlusal surface assessment. And next one, uh, when when you make the putty index um, for the crown prep, try to make it as thick and as thick as possible. So it should be thick and extending deeper because this will actually give you a stability when um, you do the uh, when you do the assessment. So it should be extending deep to just make sure that it will be a stable when you do the, the reading uh, with the peri probe. So next slide is showing the occlusal convergence between two opposing prepared axial surfaces. So it should be in between 6 and 20 degrees. So you can see on this picture it's actually taken from a paper. Um, it's you can see that the 10 actually is um, something that we actually we might figure out that it is actually an excessive taper the 15 also is a bit excessive but still we we can do up till like 10 uh, sorry 20 degrees so up till 20 degrees is still acceptable in the ATC criteria they said up till 20 degrees it will be considered as um, as um, as in satisfactory criteria but less than 5 uh, less than 6 
it's nearly parallel because you cannot actually identify um, six from zero. So our normal eyes cannot identify that. But um, if, if you find it parallel, it can be either six or zero, but it shouldn't be parallel. You should add a bit of more um, taperness into, the, into your preparation. So try to aim getting toward like 15 because 15 is something in between. It won't be excessive and also it won't be um, less than six. Just we'll go um, into some points to remember um, during crown preparation. So remember that over reduction is usually better than under reduction. And this is according to the criteria of the ADC uh, because they, they put actually a wide range for the over reduction. However, if it is under reduction, it will go straight into the borderline because they will consider it an uh, insufficient amount of reduction of the tooth. Um, also remember that over taper is better than getting any minor undercut because also minor undercut is in the borderline criteria. However, we should aim toward getting an, a good taper, which is up till 20 degrees. Uniform thickness of the finish line is very important. It is better to do uniform 0.8 millimeters margin for all surfaces rather than getting like the buccal and lingual 0.5 and the proximal one because this I can say um, that for many candidates are trying to do that because buccal and lingual is usually accessible and they can control it however the proximal is not very accessible for some candidates so they find that they can do 0.5 on the buccal and one on the uh, on, on the proximal, however, it is better to get it uniform as much as you can. Um, crown preparation task is usually one of the straightforward tasks in the exam. The criteria of the ADC is very clear, and if, if, if you, you perfect it, you will get each grade in the exam. However, it needs some practice, so um, just with practice, you will, you will get better in this task. Try not to limit uh, only to the teeth which came on previous exams. Try to do all the possibilities. Uh, historically, previously, the, 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 they bring, uh, they brought actually on, on, the, on this task, on the full gold crown, there was lower six and seven. These are the teeth that came previously on the exam. However, upper six and seven still possibility they can it can come so try also to do like um, other teeth which 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 didn't come in in previous exams so just just to try to avoid any surprises um, to happen in the exam um, next slide is as as an conclusion for the EDC criteria I call it checklist so you can like um, write down this checklist and use it while you are practicing just to make sure that you are fulfilling all the most important things on the criteria. And then after, after, after you read it and apply it, you will memorize it and you will, you will be able to, to do it, um, I mean, uh, later on, even without reading the, the criteria or the checklist. So quickly we'll go through it. Um, first thing, uniform width of the margin of 0.5 millimeters should be located supergingivally by 0.5 millimeter. You, can, you need to check with the periprobe and top view to make sure that it is continuous and uniform. Second point, amount of reduction of one, one millimeter for the buccal and lingual wall. To check that, you need the body index and the periprobe, and 1.5 millimeter at least for the occlusal surface. Um, 
you should use two putties with a pro the I mean the putty which is cut mesodistal and the other one which is cut buccolingual um, also try when 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 you do the occlusal reduction at least it should be 1.5 millimeter they put on the satisfactory criteria that it's still acceptable to do it up to 2.5 millimeters um, third point is the adequate taper and no undercut so you shouldn't have any undercut in your preparation even minor undercut is considered uh, in the borderline so as I said before over taper is better than undercut so it is acceptable up to 20 degrees number four no damage to adjacent teeth um, this is an important thing so we should avoid getting any damage to adjacent teeth while we are preparing but if it happens and it's it it yeah it, it happens yeah especially in the exam where when you are a bit stressed and um, yeah some, some some things like this happens um, but don't leave it without correction any damage can be corrected except the gums damage any damage to the adjacent teeth can be corrected so if it happens corrected with soft flex discs or fine finishing diamond burrs so it depends on how big is the injury if it is just a scratch usually soft flex discs will be enough if it is necking into the tooth you might need to to use the fine finishing diamond burr i will show you a picture of that soon on the presentation and you should you shouldn't have any damage also to the gingiva unfortunately if it happens it cannot be corrected however minor damage to the gingiva is i think on the criteria of the satisfactory however the major damage is uh, borderline so try to avoid getting damage to the gingiva as much as you as possible try to avoid uh, pushing your bears down to the gums try to avoid using soft flex discs close to the gums in the especially on the molar teeth uh, because it can cause um, damage number five preservation of occlusal anatomy you should do depth of grooves and follow the anatomy during the reduction for the cusp and fossa so it shouldn't be flat number six smooth mar margins and smooth prep with no sharpness nor debris debris is something that very easily can be um, like messed during the preparation if you leave debris around the the tooth or around the adjacent teeth it will be considered as borderline so try after you finish try to apply a copious amount of water with the treble syringe to give it a good wash to make sure that there is no debris at all do finishing of the line angles check with your fingers i usually do that after i finish my prep i check with my fingers with my finger to check for any sharpness in my preparation number seven make sure that the secondary plane which is should be buccally in the lower or palatally in the upper is apparent on the occlusal third of the surface but without any demarcation um, line between the two planes so it should be a smooth transition this is the last point in our checklist next thing we'll discuss the PFM the post infused to metal